Oh, cool. So um, for uh, this next group, um, we have a team that has taken a classic Game Boy Advance game and um, moved it onto the web so that uh, you can experience it with you know, like other people um, all over the place. Um, I remember it's actually a, a game that I had as a kid, even though I don't think I ever beat it. So I'm very grateful for them for giving me a, a chance to you know, like maybe get back into it. Uh, so they're called Advance Wars Online, and I'll turn it over to them. Howdy. Hey, so uh, my name's Max Allen. These are my uh, teammates, Brian Parrish and Abrar Sher. Uh, and our capstone is a recreation of Advance Wars, uh, a turn-based tactics game. Uh, so two players compete head-to-head -head via an online lobby. Uh, one player is the red team, one player is the blue team. Uh, and each takes turns moving their respective pieces in an, in an uh, in effort to either capture their opponent's headquarters or uh, to uh, destroy their opponent's remaining pieces. Um, all the updates are in real time, and uh, all the updates are in real time, and uh, each piece's archetype basically specifies uh, the amount of uh, pieces it can move uh, and its attributes. So, for instance, uh, attack, defense points. So one of the biggest challenges we faced was managing a lot of complex game logic within our state. We not only had to manage the state of the entire board, but that of each individual piece. This meant that when a player performed an action, we would send the results and any further options to the player while updating the individual piece state. We would then render any visuals associated with this action and then update the entire game state for the rest of the board. So whenever a player chose to do any action with a piece, which could be anything from attacking another piece to attacking a city, to um, using a factor to create a new piece, or something as simple as waiting in the same place, meant that all the other pieces on the board had to be rendering and updating in real time to be sure that they were updated with these changes in state. One of our best examples of this was the implementation of an A-star pathfinding algorithm into rendering our player movement animations. When a player moves a piece, it'll show all the tiles within its radius that it can move to. By doing so, it needs to check the data and state associated with all these tiles to ensure that this was a viable option. The algorithm would then calculate the most efficient route possible to this destination and then render the animation. By using Phaser, we were able not only to manage and account for all this game logic, but we were able to create sprites, render animations, create the tiles for our game board, and also handle any events. I'll now leave it to a bar to explain the online multiplayer portion of our game. Thank you, Brian. Okay, I am really nervous. Let's do this. Okay. <laughs> So creating the online multiplayer feature of the game presented many challenges. One of the first challenges we had was deciding which event library exactly to use. Should we use Sockets, a bi-directional event-driven library, or should we use Firebase, a real-time database hosted on the cloud? So after some discussion, we decided to use Sockets because, one, we were already really proficient in it, and emitting actions and events, which a lot of our piece movement depended on, felt just a little bit simpler. But once we started integrating Sockets into our game, we quickly realized that um, Setting up a database would require too much work. Maintaining persistent lobbies and constantly updating every an SQL database with every new game state would be just un too unnecessary unnecessarily time consuming and inefficient. So that's when we switched to using Firebase. Firebase was good for us specifically because it allowed us it, it gave us a unified layer of data and asynchronous events. It provided us with a database and any changes made to that database were of course real time. So now instead of manually managing complicated async flows, Firebase, Firebase unified the data for us and made it really easier to abstract out exactly what we wanted. And on the plus side, along with Phaser, we got to learn another cool new library. So once we switched to Firebase, maintaining real-time updates and persistence on our game became much simpler. That's where the second issue came in. When we originally started working, we decided to start off by just building the game logic itself first and adding the online interaction later. But once we finished the game logic itself, we realized we actually built a completely local multiplayer game. So we encountered this issue by creating two separate game modes. We created a local game and an online game. We made a completely separate online game state moved all our code from the local game state, and completely refactored it so that it would contain lobbies and it worked well with Firebase. I mean, we faced a ton of problems during this step, but I guess the two of the biggest issues were one, making sure that p uh, events such as peace, uh, peace movement and firing didn't happen automatically. Both the animation 
and firing both the animation and pathfinding still needed to work. And the second was adding some sort of gatekeeper aspect. And what I mean by that is that um, making sure that one team wasn't allowed to move another team's piece and wasn't allowed to move if it wasn't his turn. Um, in the end, we were able to uh, overcome th these this difficulty and other difficulties and uh, create a super cool multiplayer version of the game that uh, fans of the Advanced War series haven't seen before. I'm just going to head off to Max for some closing remarks. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's Advanced Wars. We're really proud of this project and enjoy playing it, um, and hopefully you will too. That was an excellent recreation of it. It was, it, it looks great. And um, I, I know they were, they were nervous, or I was nervous, but they did a great presentation as well. I think it, uh, the project plays well. I like that they put in kind of like a 30 second sales pitch for Firebase, but it was a good pitch. So um, we'll let the Firebase guys know about that. But yeah, I think it's interesting. Um, and then the, the, the A star algorithm, I always like when students have to get to kind of exploring these kind of algorithms, optimizing for them, choosing how they integrate into their game itself. It's always a great, um, a great way to integrate kind of what it would be a traditional CS kind of type curriculum into it. So it's cool that they had to, a chance to play with that. And oftentimes it's a lot easier in 2D than 3D just because of, um, uh, we, can, we can more easily think oh, about the data itself. Well, I, either way, we'll, we'll be playing after, after this. <laughs> after, okay. We have so many games. I'm, I'm going to beat you at Trinal Fetris. I'm going to beat you at Advance Wars Online. I'm going to beat you at um, well, we, Meander. Chris, are you pointing at me? Cause <laughs> just so, so many games to... Um... All right. Oh, yes. And of course, if you would like to vote for uh, Advance Wars Online, if you are an Advance Wars fan, um, did Advance Wars and Final Fantasy ever do a crossover game? Uh, no, no, okay, I don't think so. But if you like Advance Wars, vote for that team, like the post, like that pinned comment,